Guys, it's been a rough week for some of our older politicians. First, you have Dianne Feinstein, who is now at home recovering from a fall. And this is on the tail of this public gaffe. To say I, I would like to support a yes vote. Just say I. Then we have Mitch McConnell, who publicly froze, presumably having some sort of medical incident, live on air in front of the media. And then, of course, we have the many elderly moments of our now president, Joe Biden. Dusty, it wasn't easy. People counted you out saying you're past your prime. Hell, I know something about that. <laughs> And you know what this has pointed out for me? I think an issue that we can all agree on, and that is that our leaders are too old. Let's talk about it. Guys, before we get into this video, please like and subscribe. I want as many people to find this channel as possible so you know what to do. Now, I used to have the idea that the older you were, the wiser you were, that it made sense to have so many older people in positions of power in our government. They've been around longer than us and presumably have more knowledge. Maybe they have a deeper connection to this country's history and they can utilize that as they are being public servants to our citizens. And they just have a few more notches on their belt that help them in their positions of power. But I can't help but feel that we are now testing the limits of that idea that I may, in fact, have been wrong. Or at the very least, there should be a cutoff for exactly how old you can be to be in government. When pictures of our U.S. senators start to be confused for advertisements for nursing homes, I think we have a problem. And the name of that problem is gerontocracy. It means that we are being ruled by the old of our society. And we all know that as you age, competence can come into question. Are these people really capable of making decisions that affect our lives? Are they even attached enough to their youth to know what our daily lives are like and take that into account when they're working on legislation or making any sort of decision that is going to affect our day to day? Well, if so, how do you sustain a business model in which users don't pay for your service? Senator, we run ads. I see. And more importantly, given their age, do they care about whether or not the decisions that they make affect our lives negatively? And you know what? I want to be compassionate. It is not an easy thing to grow old, right? These are struggling times. You're contending with your own body and you're recognizing that you're not the young person that you used to be. But at some point, we all need to recognize when is the time to call a quits. I'm old and tired. Respect your elders. And maybe that time is when your constituents are quite literally screaming at you to retire. And when you look into this idea of gerontocracy a little bit further, you'll find that the problem is so much deeper than just age and competence. The problem is in fact that we are ushering people into government and they are choosing to stay there for decades upon decades. Dianne Feinstein's been in government for 45 years, Mitch McConnell for 38, Biden for, I believe, over 50 years. How is it possible that we've allowed these politicians to sit in these positions where they're meant to be serving us for so long? Just as a note, and I just learned this today, the median age of your senators is 65. And I don't know about you, but to me, it simply doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that you could come into a position of power in the government and stay for nearly half a century. I'm sorry, are you from the past? <laughs> Now there's the nefarious angle, right? That these people don't actually care about American citizens, that they fully intend on staying in government as long as they possibly can, because it's put them in the position to build status, line their pockets, and make connections that put them in a better place than anybody else. Then you have the less nefarious position, that maybe these people simply need to be told that they are too old to be in the position that they currently have. You know that moment that many of us are gonna have where we have to sit down grandma and grandpa and tell them that they can no longer drive and that their license is revoked because they're going 30 and a 70, they're running red lights, and they can't read the road signs anymore? We'll see who can't drive their grandson at night without glasses or a license using a mop to press the pedals. That's essentially what we need to do with these politicians. 
To me, our political system was never meant to be one that uplifts career politicians. It was supposed to be one where you step away from something greater that you were doing to be a public servant for a little while, to fix things that are going wrong in our communities. You do your due diligence to make that happen, and then you see yourself out. You'll remember that famously, George Washington put a cutoff for his time as president. He didn't want to stay too long. He thought that effectively, if you stayed longer than your term limit, you were making yourself into a king or a monarch that you had outlived your time as president and that it was now time to hand the torch over to somebody else. And maybe that somebody else needs to be somebody who can get up out of their chair, walk to the other end of the room, sit back down and do so without assistance. Huh? Don't worry, Pops. We're almost across the street. Hey, get away from me. I don't need no snot-nosed little... And I'm not advocating that there needs to be a designated cut-off age for politicians, but I think we should know whether or not they are competent before we allow them to take on these positions. Some old people maintain their sharpness. My grandmother, in fact, knows probably where she was on January 27th of 1963. But that's not the case for all. And if you're looking at a politician and thinking, they seem like one of those old people that gives away their social security number and banking details when an Indian scammer calls them and tells them they want a giveaway. I won. The money is mine. I have the money. The money is mine. Maybe they shouldn't be your senator. And I'll be honest, guys, I don't know what the real solution is here. But at the very least, maybe we could come up with some sort of test that helps us to decipher whether or not these people are capable of being in office. Like asking them if they know today's date. What year is it? Or can they outline the title and job description for the job that they currently hold? Or if I turn off their computer, could they turn it back on? Computer? Computer? If I hand you this phone unlocked, could you figure out how to call somebody? You know, guys, I'm just spitballing here because there has to be a way to stop moments like this from happening. Like I said, these situations are sad. I imagine they're sad for the politicians whose bodies are wearing on them and they're starting to realize that maybe they're not the young person that they were. I'm 30. Well, in November, I'll be 30. But it's even more sad for us the individuals who are meant to be looking up at these positions of power and thinking that they have our best interests at heart. And even if they do have our best interests at heart, have they in fact become too old to push those interests forward? I don't know, you guys tell me, because every time I turn on the television to watch the news, it seems like I'm seeing the same faces, they're just a little bit older than they were the year before. What are they selling? Chocolate! What? Chocolate! And maybe, just maybe, I have identified an issue and a problem that no matter what side of the political aisle you're on, what policy you support, how you think this country should be run, you agree on. And to be honest, it's great that we can have a laugh, right? And I'm no stranger to making jokes about the current situation that we're in. But this points out a far more serious issue. Our government should not have this incentive structure built in place that allows things like this to happen. Now, more so than ever, we need strong, smart, competent leaders at the head of this country. And that seems to be something that whether or not you're Democrat, Republican, Independent, whatever it is you are, we are hard pressed to find. But I don't know, you guys give me your opinions in the comments down below. Am I being dramatic and these are just small moments that I'm making too much of? Is this a problem that we've had for quite some time? And what should we do if you also agree that this is a problem? Should we institute term limits? Should there be a hard cutoff age for when you can no longer be in a position of power in government? Or maybe we institute a good old competence test. Trust me, I'm like a smart person. You let me know, because the one thing that I definitely recognize is that a solution needs to be found and it needs to be found quick. So put that in the comments down below. And as always, please like, subscribe, click the notification bell to be notified every single time I post a video for you guys, which is every single day. And do get out in the comments, but do so respectfully. I'll see you guys next time.